Oh, don't be so down in the dumps, Percy. I know the mail run was very important to you, but you never know. Maybe they might bring it up again for Christmas. After all, one lorry can't do the whole job on his own at that time. That made Percy smile a bit. Thanks, Emily. It was Christmas time on the island of Sodor, and of course the Fat Controller's engines were very busy once again. Since there weren't many fishing boats in the harbour on Christmas Eve, there were fewer trucks for Percy to shunt and pull. So the Fat Controller had asked him to look after the passengers on Thomas's branch line while Toby was away at the quarry filling in for Mavis, who was being repaired. When he reached Titmouth, Percy saw Henrietta, Victoria and Elsie standing on a siding waiting for him. He then noticed that behind Elsie were some old, worn-out vans. They were the emergency vans from the mail depot. Percy knew that the mail train had been retired, but he was puzzled. As he backed his train into the station, the station master came up to him. Once you arrive at Toyrex Station, you will meet up with Hugh to collect some letters and parcels to take to the top station. Oh, so that's what those vans are there for. But what is Hugh doing at Toyrex? After he collected his passengers, he puffed away. When he arrived at Toy Wreck, he saw Hugh standing nearby, looking rather impatient. Hello Hugh, what are you doing here? Have you broken down? No, I'm here with all these parcels from Farquhar, but I'm not allowed to go there. Not allowed? Why? I'm not suitable for the roads that lead to Farquhar. Apparently they're too narrow and sharp for a lorry like myself. I'm capable of handling any road. It's all just stuff and nonsense if you ask me. Well, having a moan isn't going to think things now, is it, Hugh? Orders are orders, and you have to follow them. Once all the parcels were on board, Percy set off again. Bye, Hugh. Bye, Percy, replied Hugh. Okay, he sighed. Time to head off. Hugh is a good lorry, but sometimes he can be rather impatient, especially when he's delivering the mail. As he started to pull out, another lorry pulled up. Hurry up, Silver Giant, he said. Then Bertie arrived. Oh, get a move on! My passengers are waiting! Hugh didn't reply, but as more and more vehicles arrived, their complaints became louder and louder. At last, Hugh lost his composure. Will you be quiet? He snapped. It's not my fault that I was stationed to deliver the post here. If you want to jolly well complain, then by all means, waste your time over at the sorting office. 
Now you lost her in my way. And he roared away. Lousy road rules. It would make far more sense if I was allowed to be on Toy Wreck. Then those other vehicles wouldn't have to get on my case about making that U-turn. I know, Q. But like Percy said, orders are orders. When Percy arrived at the top station, he saw Bertie sulking in the car park. Hello, Bertie. What's the matter? Oh, it's that lorry. I can't remember his name. My driver told me to remember that he has the same name as that actor who plays someone called Dr. House. Hugh? What's wrong with him? And Bertie explained. Well, Bertie, if you had to carry sacks of Christmas parcels and letters, having to be stationed on a small country road because of narrowness and sharp corners, you wouldn't find it easy, would you? Bertie thought about Percy's words for a moment, and then felt rather silly complaining about Hugh. Now look, it's Christmas, and I think it's better if we look forward to the celebrations rather than complaining. After all, there's the Fat Controller's Christmas party to look forward to. Meanwhile, Hugh arrived back from the big station with extra mail and delivered all the previous letters and parcels before he arrived at Toy Wreck. He was thinking how he could travel beyond the station with no one stopping him. And an idea came to his head. Driver, I forgot to tell you. The postmaster wants us to travel to Farquhar to deliver this mail. But I thought Thomas was supposed to do that. Well, he was, but then he broke one of his cylinders. So we better get a move on. And just as he hoped for, the driver believed him. After Bertie collected his passengers, he rolled along the country road. Percy is right. It's Christmas and get quite hectic. Once I see Hugh, I'll apologize. He didn't have to wait long. As he neared Hackenbeck, Bertie looked in shock to see Hugh honking his horn and traveling on the road towards Farqua at a tremendous speed. Get out of my way! He shouted. Bertie's driver swerved near a field as the large lorry raced through. Luckily no one was hurt, but Bertie knew that Hugh would be in trouble. You can't go there! But Hugh was out of earshot. Then everything seemed to happen at once. Oh, worry motors, he said. Just then, Percy puffed into view. Hugh! What happened? Oh, I see. You decided you want to be a tractor instead of a male lorry, eh? I think it suits you. Perhaps you're looking to replace in those tyres with Caterpillar tracks, and then you have fewer accidents on the road. <laughs> Never mind. I better go get some help. It wasn't long before he returned, and Terence the tractor arrived to help him out of the field. The postmaster came to see him as well, but needless to say, he was not too pleased. Hugh! Explain yourself, he demanded, and Hugh did just that. Oh, you silly lorry, he sighed. You should know better than to lie to your driver like that. Now, how will all the people from Toy Rector to Farquhar get their Christmas mail? Percy could do all of it. He just needs to go back to the big station and add more vans, said Henrietta. The postmaster agreed. So the mail from Hugh was loaded into the empty vans, and Percy puffed away to take them to the top station. Then he hurried back to the big station, 
Kobe collected some extra bands and placed them behind his other ones. Then after all of the mailbags were placed inside, he puffed away. He popped up and down the line all day until all the mail sacks were delivered. Meanwhile, Hugh was placed back onto the road and awaited a flat truck to take him back to the mail depot for repairs. I'm really sorry, sir. I will talk to you later, Hugh. Meanwhile, the fat controller arrived at the top station. He had heard everything. Well, John Percy, your cleverness has shaved the postal company from Michigan to Jetlines. Oh, don't thank me, sir, replied Percy. It was all Henrietta's idea. Well then, well done to you, Henrietta. And Percy too, of course. I think the mail still has a future on this railway. I couldn't agree more. I have received a call from head office. They were most impressed with Percy's handling of the mail. They thought of a new idea for the new year. We will still have the mail run on the roads, but we will be happy to also have your railway helping out in case of any emergency. Like today. Looks like I got an early Christmas gift, Percy chuckled. Yes, you sure did, replied the postmaster. The day's work was done, and the station yard was quiet. But not all was done yet. Okay, announced the fat controller. It's time that you all head towards Barrow to be part of our Christmas party cavalcade. Yes, sir, replied the engines, and they puffed away with the railway staff singing Christmas carols. while as Percy was looking forward to the future of the mail run. As for Hugh, the postmaster couldn't let him join the carol concert because of his repairs. But since it is the season to be jolly, he had organized for some local carolers to sing to him. Although he did still tell him that he had to improve his patience in the new year.